Why, the wickets are still standing, so you're getting irritated? <laughs> <laughs> Don't take Chennai wickets, okay? <laughs> you're a big MS Dhoni fan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Saurav Ganguly brought some victories to us and brought a new spirit and of competitiveness. Dhoni brought a certain kind of calm and control. I think uh, he did a great job for the country. mentioned it, and it's about learning about each other, uh, taking it back to what we talked about right in the beginning, about you exploring the, the native uh, Indians' uh, culture and bringing awareness to it. And that's how we learn about each other. And as humans, we learn that we just all want to get along. Um, so that's actually very liberating. How, how would you say one can liberate their minds, especially when they are in I mean, we've been in a bubble. I'm going to be quite specific to sport. You know, when you are in a bubble, um, we tend to forget or we tend to, to get a bit irritated now that we can't actually... Why, the wickets are still standing, so you're getting irritated? <laughs> Sometimes, you know. Somebody is very happy. Somebody is very happy the wicket is not falling. <laughs> I'm happy that they are falling, trust me. <laughs> Sometimes when you're in the room, it can get a bit hectic. And um, that that's the phrase that comes to my head, is liberating your mind from from negative emotion. How, how, how would you say people can actually practice that? See, we must understand this. Right now, how do I liberate this tree? I'm saying I don't have to liberate it, I just have to nourish it, it will grow as tall as it can, all right? Yeah. The same thing with you, you have to nourish this life. Nourishment for the body is one kind which people know what to eat, even that they don't know, that also we are teaching them <laughs> what to eat, what not to eat, <laughs> that's another matter. But generally, let's say people know what to eat. But nourishing the other dimensions of the human being, what does it mean? See, a human being, in human being's experience of life, just fulfilling survival process and reproductive process is not going to settle him. This is true with every other creature. If they get to eat well and they get to reproduce, they're fine. Beyond that, they're not aspiring for anything else. They're quite fine. They are not suffering insecurities of what I can be, what I cannot be. You know, a lion in Africa is not worried, will I become a good lion or will I become a house cat, what is my problem? He has no such problems, he just had to get food. If he eats well, he becomes a good lion, that's all. But that is not the case with the human being. When survival is in question, it's a big issue. Once it's taken care of, well, <laughs> there are... when stomach is empty, there's one problem. When stomach is full, there are one hundred problems, all right? And more successful people become, they seem to multiply their problems. So what is it that is going wrong? What is going wrong is just this. We are thinking that this human being will settle for something little more. Wherever you are, you want little more. What I heard that you got twenty-three wickets, huh? At the moment, yeah, I think so, yeah. So you want more wickets? Don't take Chennai wickets, okay? <laughs> so, uh... You're a big MS Dhoni fan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think uh, he brought... Uh... I just met him, just saw him once on a golf course, I didn't really get to chat with him or anything, just met him and said hello, kind of thing. But uh, I think he brought a, a new... Uh, a new sense of life to Indian cricket, you know. Yeah, he's a well, Saurav, Saurav Ganguly brought some victories to us and brought a new spirit and of competitiveness. But Dhoni brought a certain kind of calm and control and, you know, completely a different kind of atmosphere on the cricket field. 
a sense of bonding with everybody. I think uh, he did a great job for the country and now I think uh, the youngsters have built upon that in a much better way. That's a great thing. Anyway, oh, actually, living... Yes. You're going to go to cricket conversation now. On that point, on that point, <laughs> I, I, I think I got your point though, when it comes to, uh, you know, nourishing yourself and being grateful for what you have. Um, that when you do, you always want more and more and more. But when, when does it cap? Is that, is that where you were at? Or were you going to say more on that? In a way, let us say, I will make you the king of this planet. Yeah. You're looking... Ah, come on, man. I won't make such a blunder. <laughs> You'll knock down everything with your ball. So, suppose you become the king of this planet, will you be fulfilled? Uh, no. No, you're already looking up, you're looking at the moon, I can see that. You would want the moon also. If I give you the moon, will you settle? No, you'll want the other planets. If I give you the entire solar system, will you settle? No, you look at the galaxy. So there is something within a human being longing to expand. Yeah. So if you really look at it, you're not looking for more, you're looking for all. You want to expand limitlessly. Please see if I make you king of one galaxy, will you not look at the other galaxies? You definitely will, isn't it? So, there is something within a human being longing to expand limitlessly. When I say limitlessly, it wants to become boundless. But the world of physicality is a world of boundaries. Without a defined boundary, there is no physical existence. So, now your longing to be boundless means, unknowingly, you're longing to be beyond your physical nature, but you are trying to settle it with a uh, little more money, little more wealth, little more shopping, little more this and that, but it will not settle that way. Somebody was telling me recently, I met someone in, uh, you know, where who's achieved, who's a big achiever in United States, and he was saying, I thought if I make money, if I build this big house and become famous, it'll settle, but it is not... the scratch is not settling the itch. It doesn't. Because the longing is to expand limitlessly. So, can you become limitless physically? What, in what sense? Like... No, can your physical body become limitless? Don't try that <laughs> No, physical has to have a boundary. Defined boundary is the basis of physicality. But there is a longing here which wants to become limitless. So, this longing to become limitless means in some way, you're longing to be something more than your physical nature, because your physical nature is an accumulated process, isn't it? You were not born like this. You were born like this, but you became this much, because this is an accumulation of food that we have eaten. What you call as mind is also an accumulation of impressions and experiences that we have gathered. So, how much ever you accumulate, it will not become boundless. But there is something within you longing to be boundless. If this has to be settled, your experience of life has to go beyond your physical nature. When that happens, now we will apply the most corrupted word in the world, spiritual. Because everybody has distorted this word in so many different ways. Essentially, it means your experience of life has transcended the limitations of your physicality. Because physicality comes with limitations. Physicality lim comes with cyclical compulsions. Right now, you and me are fine, if you sit here for another three, four hours, we want to go to the bathroom, then we want to eat something, then we want to drink something. This is a cycle of compulsions. So, physical nature is like this only. So, there is something here which wants to go beyond all these cycles, that is called as the spiritual process. So, spirituality does not mean going to the temple, church or mosque, it is about turning inward and knowing that which we are. That which we gathered is one thing. See, what you gather is yours. But uh, what you gather cannot be you, isn't it? It can belong to you, but it cannot be you. Right now, this is the fundamental mistake humanity is making. What we have gathered, we think it's me. The moment you make this mistake, it's endless problems. Whichever way, just see, tell me one thing that human beings are not suffering. If they're poor, they suffer their poverty. Make them rich, they suffer the taxes. If they're not educated, they suffer that. Put them to school, endless suffering. 
If they're not married, they suffer that. Get them married, don't tell me, all kinds of things will happen. You tell me one thing that they are not suffering, they are not suffering life, they are suffering the state of their own mind because they have not learnt how to discipline themselves between memory, experience and imagination. What happened ten years ago, they still suffer. This means what? Are they suffering their memory or are they suffering life? They're just suffering their memory. What may happen day after tomorrow, they already suffer. This means they're suffering their imagination. These are the two faculties which set us apart from every other creature. We have a very vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination. This is what makes human beings very different from every other creature, but that is what they're suffering. Essentially, they're suffering evolution. So, if one has to be liberated from this, in our education systems, there is nothing about how to handle this. They will teach you how to go to the moon. They will teach you how to extract protein out of an invisible bacteria, but they will not tell you how to handle these faculties that we have, because this is the most sophisticated machine that you have on this planet, but nobody has read the user's manual, that's the problem. Little bit of understanding, this mind is fine, this is the most fantastic thing you have. The greatest thing that you have here right now, in terms, in comparison to other creatures is, you have a mind. You have a cerebral capability that nobody else has. This is what human beings are suffering, suffering, their own cerebral development. If they had the brain of an earthworm, they would all be peaceful, isn't it? Okay. With that being said, I think I've got one final question. <laughs> and that, that question would be, how would you put that into practice? See, uh, the important thing is one's identity. There is a whole structure, I could uh, send that video to you, about how the mind is, you know, the different parts of the mind, how to do this. But the simple thing, to put it very simply, is this, what are you identified with? Suppose right now you're identified with uh, your game, you're playing the game. So you think you're a cricketer, you breathe cricket, you like cricket, everything cricket, cricket, cricket is happening in your head. Let's say tomorrow we wiped out your memory and we gave you football. And now you think I'm a football player, football player. Now in your dream also only football will bounce, not the cricket ball. So now you think I'm South African. Now everything works around that. Now you think you're a particular race or religion or whatever. Every identity that you take on, your mind will work only to protect that. Your intellect will essentially function only to protect that. This is why like I, I was saying yesterday, I was at Martin Luther King's uh, memorial, why do people get to do such horrible things? Because they're identified with something and it makes it all look good. When such things were being done, because it's not one or two people doing some evil, it's a whole population doing it, a whole generation of people doing it, all right? So that can only happen because you fixed an identity which makes you feel it's all good. So, in the name of your country, you can kill, in the name of your religion, you can kill, even in the name of your race, you can kill, in the name of your caste, creed, whatever other nonsense you identified with, you can kill, all right? This is simply because you're identified with something which is limited, but something within you is longing to become boundless. This needs a cosmic identity. A little bit of work, everybody can do this, that if you just breathe consciously, you understand your lung is not just here, it's the entire bubble of atmosphere is your lung, isn't it? Hello? Little bit is in and out, push, push, it's happening, but tell me, isn't this a whole bubble of your breath all over? Right now, last thirty-six days, I've been traveling all over the place, where all I left my exhalation, is anybody calculating? Or where all I took my inhalation, is anybody calculating? I'm saying at least identify with the world in which you live, global identity. Well, you can have smaller identities of nationality, uh, race, uh, community, family, it's all fine. But the fundamental identity has to be much larger than what you can see. Globe 
used to be a wonderful thing at one time, but now everybody can see the in and out of it. So I would say a cosmic identity is best. It, your identity be sh should be such that in your experience, it is limitless. Once you take on an identity like this, your mind is not a problem at all. Because once you are not identified with anything that you can see here, believe me, if you sit here, you will sit like me without a single thought on your mind. <laughs> Nothing happening in my head, empty. Yeah. No, that's very interesting. I guess that's why you have a lot of uh, people, indigenous people, Africans who who believe in a God. They don't know what this God is, but they believe in a God. You got people in India, they believe in many different gods. Uh, no, no, we create them, huh? We create them, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, and it's fascinating and it touches on what you're saying. Uh, you have uh, the Japanese culture where they focus on, you know, what you're saying is, if you have, if you attach yourself to an ego, you become, you limit yourself. But then, when you now, who is this? Ego, who is this, Mr. Ego, KG? The ego is, is the mind, isn't it? No, 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 no. See, Mr. Ego is a fall guy in everybody's life. When you are wonderful, you say, "This is me." But when you do something nasty, you say, "It's Mr. Ego. We must stop this, because within you there is only one person. You are an individual. That means you are not further divisible. This is very important." You do not divide yourself into my higher self, lower self, my ego, my super consciousness, all this. This is an individual. This is me. Sometimes I'm wonderful, sometimes I'm nasty, sometimes I'm fantastic, sometimes I'm horrible. If you see this, the horrible will go out of your life, if you see this is me. But you know, it was Mr. Ego doing that, so you're never going to fix it. So don't create other guys, these are fall guys. If you bowl well, it's you. If you don't bowl well, it's you. Yes. All right? Fix that one thing, you will see you will bowl very well. <laughs> yes. Let's end on that. Super Kings, Chennai Super Kings, go easy, huh? <laughs> no, we've already played them twice, so we're done with Chennai Super Kings. Ah. <laughs> I'm tired of Chennai winning. I'm tired of them winning. It's our turn now. <laughs> It's our turn. <laughs> All the best, uh, KG. Huh? You must play well, you're a young man, you've done very well. Great to see you uh, from South Africa. I think at one time, you guys had a great team and now it's a little down. But it's great to see that you're shining the way you're doing. And uh, what speeds are you hitting, huh? Um, uh, around the 140 to 150. Oh, that's great. That's great. And uh, what you're doing swinging this way, that way, I've not seen you play, man. I should watch it. All yes. the best for your game coming up. Thank you so much. No, thank, thank you, you for, for chatting. Thank and you. hopefully we chat soon. Thank you. Yep.